Hi, I'm Joe Landry, and this is a presentation about the history of Franklin, decade by decade. In this video, we'll look back at the 1890s and explore the events that happened during that time period. The sources of information that will be discussed in this presentation were taken from such places as the Franklin Register, which was the town's first newspaper, and the Franklin Sentinel, which replaced it. The pictures were taken from the Stanley Chilson collection and the Sanborn fire insurance maps, as well as my own personal pictures and postcards. In addition, I would like to give a special word of thanks to Rebecca Finnegan and the staff at the Franklin Historical Museum for their assistance. The Franklin Historical Museum's website is shown here, where you will find links to Facebook and Instagram. The New Morse Block In May of 1890, construction began on the large brick building that is seen in the picture. This block was on East Central Street and was owned by Aaron Hartwell Morse, who had just completed building the Morse Opera House block across the street from this block. The brick building was constructed between David Corson's Market and the Robert McPherson Furniture Store, which is seen on the right. Both buildings were demolished in the early 2000s to make way for an apartment building. The A. B. Fletcher Block In May of 1890, work began on the construction of the A. B. Fletcher Block, which is the brick building as pointed out by the arrow. The new block was built by Austin Barclay Fletcher, who was the son of Asa Austin Fletcher. It was demolished in the 1980s to make way for a new bank building. Before construction of the A.B. Fletcher block began, a small cottage was moved to Summer Street to make room for the building. This cottage had been built in South Franklin and was moved to this location at some point in time. An article in the Franklin Sentinel at that time mentioned that this was the house that Dr. Oliver Dean was born in. The arrow points to the cottage as shown in the 1888 drawing of Franklin. The Franklin Public Library In May of 1890, which was 10 years before the Ray Memorial Library was constructed, the Franklin Public Library was moved to the second floor of the second Ray Block from its previous location in the first Ray Block. The library was accessed from the Dean Avenue side of the building, as noted by the arrow. The James F. Ray Grain Store In November of 1894, construction began on James F. Ray's new grain store on Depot Street. It was 100 feet long and 40 feet wide, and it was designed so that teams could drive through the building. Here is a picture from 1910 that shows James F. Ray's new grain store on Depot Street. The Horace Mann House. In June of 1890, Van R. Warren, who was the owner of the Indian Rock Riding Park on East Central Street, established the Horace Mann House as a hotel and operated it under that name. This house was the birthplace of Horace Mann, who was born on May 4, 1796. In August of 1908, Enoch Waite, who had taken possession of the building, removed a portion of the tower and two verandas and painted it to make it more habitable. In October of 1918, Herbert S. Wolford, who was the owner of the property at that time, tore down the Horace Mann house and built a bungalow in its place. That home was demolished in 1963 when the Horace Mann Plaza was constructed in that location. The Horace Mann High School this is the Horace Mann High School, which was constructed in 1893 at the corner of West Central Street and Emmons Street. It replaced the School Street School, which had previously served as the high school. 
The School Street School was renamed the William Makepeace Thayer School in 1900. This school building was replaced in 1924 by the Davis Thayer High School at the corner of West Central Street and Union Street. And once that school opened, this school then became known as the Horace Mann Elementary School. It was extensively rebuilt in the mid-1930s and continued to be used as an elementary school until the 1970s when it was converted into a municipal building. The Second Congregational Church This is the Second Congregational Church, which was constructed in 1872. It replaced the first Congregational Church, which was taken over by the Catholics when this church was finished. The Second Congregational Church was destroyed by fire in 1893. The cause of the fire was not known, but the theory was advanced that a skyrocket that had been launched at the common the night before may have gotten lodged in the roof and started the fire. This made sense as the fire was first noticed on the roof and spread rapidly, and in less than two hours from the time that the alarm was given, the whole structure had fallen into the cellar. The Third Congregational Church This is the Third Congregational Church, which was completed in 1895 on the same site as the previous church. In 1938, the Baptists began to worship with the Congregationalists when their church on School Street was heavily damaged by the 1938 hurricane. In 1941, this church became known as the Franklin Federated Church. The Dean Academy Gymnasium The Dean Academy Gymnasium is the brick building to the left of Dean Hall. It was completed in 1893. The Dana Block The Dana Block is the three-story building with the mansard roof. It was constructed in 1893 by Alfred C. Dana, whose drugstore had previously been in the A. A. Fletcher Block. The arrow points to a large illuminated mortar and pestle that Mr. Dana put up on his building in April of 1911. This is the building that stood where the Dana Block was located. Before construction began on the Dana Block, this building was moved to the rear of the lot and turned at a 45 degree angle. This detail is from the 1899 Sanborn Fire Insurance map, and it shows the building after it had been moved to the rear of the Dana Block and turned at a 45 degree angle. This was done in order to follow the property line. The first St. Mary's Parochial School. The brick building that is shown in this picture was built in 1898 as a parochial school by St. Mary's Catholic Parish. It was located at the intersection of Union Street, Beaver Street, and the part of Oak Street that is known as Daniel McKay Hill Street today. The land where this building was located had previously been purchased from the Fitzpatrick Estate in 1892 by Archbishop John J. Williams of the Archdiocese of Boston. The parochial school was established in 1893, a few years before the brick building had been constructed. Until then, classes were held in the house that was part of the Fitzpatrick Estate, as well as the basement of the church. In 1898, the school had grown large enough to justify the construction of the school building. In June of 1900, the first St. Mary's Church burnt to the ground, and at that point, the parish decided to turn this building into a chapel building. In 1902, the parochial school was disbanded. The parish continued to use this building as a church until 1923, when it was destroyed by fire. It was subsequently replaced with the third St. Mary's Church, which is today's church. The Edward E. King Building In 1894, Edward E. King constructed a small building next to the town bridge that would become his barbershop. 
It was torn down in the 1970s to make way for the Rome restaurant, which is located there today. Telephone service begins in Franklin. In 1892, telephone service began in Franklin. The only telephone in town at that time was in the store of druggist Howard S. Wilkes, who had a pay service station. Three years later, five more telephone listings appeared. They were for the residence of E.P. Bassett and Sons and the office telephone of E.P. Bassett, the Boston Rubber Company, Singleton Worsted Company, and the A.C. Mason and Company with a public telephone station. Telephone rates in 1895 were $72 for a single party line, $60 for a two party line, and $51 for a three party line. The George F. S. Singleton Home. In 1892, Aaron Hotwell Morse constructed this home on the corner of Main Street and School Street on the site of the former Hubbard and Snow Straw Factory which was destroyed by fire in 1889. In October of 1895, Mr. Morse died and his widow, whose name was Lavage, continued to live there until October of 1900 when she and her second husband, Robert Russell, sold the property to George F. S. Singleton. In later years, it became the DePardo Funeral Home, followed by the Roberts Funeral Home, the Jackson Funeral Home, and the Jackson Ginley Funeral Home. Today, it is the Ginley Funeral Home. The James B. McKinnon Building. In 1894, James B. McKinnon leased the land which was located between the building formerly occupied by William Ennecrin's Bakery and Edward King's Barbershop and constructed a small building that would be used as a grocery store. In May of 1900, Mr. McKinnon took over the Briggs Hotel on Main Street, and a few weeks later, he closed the grocery store so that he could devote his full attention to the hotel. In October, a Chinese laundry would be established in this building. In January of 1901, Rodney Moore was granted a license for a bowling alley in this building. In May, Frederick Terrell took ownership of the bowling alley. In November of 1919, the bowling alley was taken over by William Brennan. In the 1930s, Francesco Brunelli purchased the block and moved the Clock Square Diner to this building from its previous location in the adjacent building. In 1948, the diner was modernized and became Brunelli's Diner. In the 1950s, it became Kami's Restaurant when Nunzio Bonina purchased it. And in 1965, it became the Rome Restaurant when the Kalachi family bought it. In later years, the whole block was torn down and today's Rome restaurant was constructed in this location. The Franklin Diner. In October of 1899, a lunch cart was placed between the Metcalf block and the Dana block by William A. Fairfield and was managed by Charles Feely. In May of 1908, the new owner, Charles H. Lawrence, installed a new lunch cot in that location. In 1926, he replaced the existing lunch cot with the one that is shown in this 1937 picture. In October of 1928, this lunch cot was the first place in town to have the new gas service that had just come into town. In 1938, Mr. Lawrence sold the lunch cot to Carlton Buzzer Mason and Elmer Bozo Fleming, who renamed the lunch cot the B&B Diner which explains why they gave the diner that name. It stood for Buzzer and Bozo. In later years, the diner was operated by Joseph Lazzarini, who renamed it the Main Street Diner. It was removed in the 1980s. The Hosey Brothers Building. In September of 1897, a building was constructed between the Daniel C. Cotton Building and the Oddfellows building on Depot Street to give the Hosey brothers more room for their hardware store as shown by the arrow. The Hosey brothers had taken over the business of Daniel C. Cotton when he died in April of 1891. 
the James F. Ray Coal Elevator. In June of 1897, James F. Ray built a coal elevator on land adjoining the property near the railroad station as shown by the arrow. A railroad siding would be part of the improvements so that the coal could be loaded directly into the sheds. The elevator was equipped with a gasoline engine which would be used to hoist the coal into the elevator. It was the only gasoline engine in town at that time. In later years, a new coal elevator would be constructed next to it. The arrow points to the coal elevator that replaced the previous one. It was torn down in the late 1950s to make way for the town municipal parking lot. The Central Hotel This is a picture of the Central Hotel on Depot Street when it was known as the American House. In September of 1907, Enoch Waite constructed an addition to the rear of the building which added 15 rooms to the hotel. In January of 1909, the hotel was renamed Hotel Lincoln by the new proprietors, Mr. Fifield and Mr. Smith. In June, a veranda and upper piazza were added to the building. In December of 1910, Enoch Waite sold the Hotel Lincoln property to David Bulliken, the brother of Harry Bulliken. By the 1930s, it was known as the American House. In later years, the 140 Cafe, Skis Lounge, and the train stop would be located there. The building was demolished in later years to make way for Dean Bank. The G.A.R. Hall This is the G.A.R. Hall, which was the former Chapel Schoolhouse on East Street. In May of 1897, it was taken over by Post 60 of the G.A.R., which stood for the Grand Army of the Republic. Before they occupied the building, a large addition was built on the north side, affording two floors with two rooms from the main hall in a banquet room with a dance floor beneath the body of the building. In addition, two pieces of artillery were added to the front lawn. It was demolished in 1963 to make way for a new police station. The A.J. Cataldo Fruit Stand In May of 1896, Joseph Cataldo built a short extension to his fruit and candy stand in Central Square. In later years, Jimmy Cajayas would have a candy store and liquor store in this location. Those buildings were torn down in later years. And this is a picture of those two buildings. Streetcars in Franklin. In May of 1899, construction began on the 32 miles of track for the Milford Franklin Winsocket Electric Street Railway. The streetcars ran until 1924 when they were discontinued. The McCabe and Cody Building. In the early 1890s, a building would be constructed near the corner of Union Street and Cottage Street, where James P. McKinnon would establish a grocery store. In 1894, he would move his store to East Central Street, and McCabe and Cody would establish their grocery store in that location. In 1895, a new building was constructed in the lot adjoining the McCabe and Cody store on the corner of Union Street and Cottage Street. During that time, the Prescott House would be established in the same building as the McCabe and Cody store. It was operated by Nellie M. Sweeney. The two buildings on that block are seen in this 1939 photo.
The Haywood Mill Extension In March of 1895, Harry Haywood constructed an addition to his mill on Union Street near Nason's Crossing. The addition was 40 feet by 100 feet. And this concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching.